So in this video we're going to carry on with uh, what we were working on before, our character movement. So this is kind of where we got to. We'd set up our, uh, we brought in our sprite sheet, we'd extracted all the sprites, and then we turned them into flip books. So we've got our idle pose and we've got our run cycle. Okay. So let's get rid of these now. We need to turn these into an actor that we can work with um, to add that interaction there. So I'm going to go into my um, my content. I'm going to go into blueprints. I'm going to go to blueprint class. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. Uh, we can use a character, which is going to have so you can see a character type of pawn that includes the ability to walk around. Uh, we could use a pawn. So it's an actor that can be possessed and re receive input from a controller. But I'm going to look for a very specific one that is to do with this 2D. So I'm going to search for paper. And down on this character, I'm going to choose this paper character. Just grab that, click on select. I'm going to call this BP underscore. Just saved. Let me just do F2 to rename that. BP underscore night. Double click on this, and then we have our capsule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this sprite. It already has this in because it's a paper sprite um, character. So we have this. I can go into my source flipbook, and we can find our, in our case, our idle pose. So the first thing to notice is that this is tiny. Uh, and what we don't want to do is we don't want to be tempted to actually resize this capsule. This is there's quite a few things dependent on this. Um, so things like physics, gravity, lots of different areas. Just we we don't want to actually resize it because it can cause issues. So we want to resize our actual sprite. So there's a better way to do this. We could resize it here, but actually what we can do is if I go back to my paper sprites. Initially, I'm going to go back to my idle pose. And if I click on a character and double click into that, uh, we have a pixels per unit here that we can resize. So a good value is around 0.25. Doesn't seem to have done anything here. But if we were to have that in our, uh, our sprite sheet uh, or our blueprint, it would look a lot better. Now, what I want to do, I'm just going to set this back to one. What I don't want to have to do is go in and do all of these individually because we've got 10 of them. Obviously, it wouldn't take that long, but um, we, we want to do this a bit better. So instead, what I'm going to do is click on the first one and shift click on the last one. I'm not including the night idle because that is taking things from these sprites. So just the sprites themselves. I'm going to right click and what we can do is go to asset actions and this edit selection in property matrix. So what this allows us to do is actually do the same thing in terms of editing these. So we can add the same value to all of them at once. So exactly the same. I've got this pixels per unit. Now we can sell that to 0.2.5, uh, 0.25 rather. And let's just click on save. And just to prove that this is done, you can see it's resized it here. But if we were to go into any of these now, let's just click on it. You can see this is 0.25. Got another one. This is 0.25. So much quicker to edit in that way. Um, you can do that with quite a lot of things. You can do it with lights, uh, any kind of static mesh if you want to do similar things to it. So really, really handy. So let's go back into our blueprint. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this up. I'm going to get roughly where it needs to be. And then I can see I have got a bit of headroom on here. Um, you could leave it like this, but if our player was to jump up, then we're going to have this collision object it hit the, if that was a platform above or something else, it wouldn't have the full extent of the movement. So I am going to take this capsule down a little bit. We can do that by making sure our capsule's on. I'm going to use this capsule half height. I'm just going to bring this down. I'm not going to do it too much, just a little bit. So let's say 78. And then I need to bring this up so the feet are right at the bottom of the capsule. Otherwise, if this was in the level, the feet would be going through the floor. So to make this easier for myself, I'm going to go into perspective. I'm going to change this to a right viewport and zoom in. I've changed my snap to working at once. And I can just now move this up. 
and get that to the right place. Okay. I will just move this. Actually, that's not bad in terms of the middle position. And then the final thing I'll do here is with a capsule, I'm going to take this value up. So I'm going to take the capsule radius up to say 37, 38. Let's try 38. Okay. Let me just move this. Let's just move it a little bit. There we go. It's pretty much spot on. So let's compile and save that. Um, so if we just to bring this in, let's go to our blueprints. We now have this character. Okay. We want to set this up as the first thing that spawns as our player character. So um, if we're to play this game right now, we're not going to get anything in there at all because we've not set up a character or a player pawn. So let's just delete this initially. And let's go um, into our content browser. Back in my blueprints, I'm going to right click. I'm going to create a blueprint class again. And this time I'm going to create a game mode. So the game mode is the underlying kind of set of rules, essentially, for your game. So I'm going to call this GM for game mode. And just go, and let's call it just uh, night game. If I double click on this, it doesn't have much in here, but we can look at these classes. And the main class I want to look at is the default pawn class. So if I go into that, I'm going to choose my knight character as the default pawn. Let's just compile and save that. I'm not going to set anything else in there. Let's just close this down. So as well as doing that there, we also need to go into our project settings. So edit project settings. Just bring this down. Under this, over here, we have this uh, maps and modes. We go into maps and modes, and we've got our default game mode. So the game mode base is the default one. I want to set this to my game mode. So mine is GM Night Game. While I'm here, I'm going to set up the default map so it doesn't load that 3D map at the start. So I'm going to go in and choose my sandbox for both of these. So this is the startup map and the default map. So the one that loads up as you start, but also when you press play and the level that loads up there as well. That will be changed eventually, but just for now. So we don't have to um, save this. We can just close it out. Bring this up. And now we should be able to press play and there's nothing there. And the reason for that is just because we haven't got a camera in there on our player. So let's just press escape. Let's go to our BP night and let's add a camera into this as well. I'll just go back to perspective view. There we go. So need two things for the camera. First thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add is a spring arm. So I'm going to click on add. I'm going to type in spring and we're going to use this spring arm. So that's going to be a point from essentially the center of the character in. I'm then going to click on add again, and we're going to add a camera. Yeah, there we go. The camera should put itself, it, it kind of automatically recognizes it as a spring arm, and it puts it right at the end of the spring arm. So actually our value 0, 0, 0, it's not in the center of the world. It's actually because it's parented to the spring arm. You can see there, I could just do that. You can see that's kind of parented out. Um, it locks itself to the end of the spring arm on there. Okay. If I move the spring arm around, you can see that moves there. So I've just moved that a little bit to the center of the capsule. And then I want this looking from the front of my character. So with the spring arm, I'm going to go into rotation and I'm going to set the rotation to 90 degrees. And then we can just go on to our Z axes. You sometimes find that it just sets it to minus 89.99. I'm just going to go into it there and just type in minus 90. Set that. Okay. Um, now, if I was to look at this, if we compile and save, let's just go back to our sandbox and let's play. And there we have our character. So we can move this camera around. This is looking from the top, which is why it's a bit like that. 
So I can actually go in and uh, let's just press escape. Uh, we can get this, get this uh, spring arm again. Let's just click on move. And I can move this down to where we want it on our player. So let's compile and save. And let's just do another play. You can see it's a better place to run the character now. Escape again. The other thing I might want to do is actually change the distance from this character, uh, the camera. So once more on my spring arm, I can go in and we've got this target arm length. So I'm going to double that. I'm going to set that to 600, say. Compile, save, and let's press play. And you can see we're further away. So it depends what kind of game you're creating. Um, if there was a platformer, you might want this a lot further away, but um, say this was more like an adventure, not, not a free world, but so we can run around almost like a side scroller, um, then that would be absolutely fine. So that's our initial setup for our character. And the next phase, we're going to set up our inputs. And we're going to start adding the movement to our character as well. So I'll leave this video here.